Are you the CEO or an executive of a faith and value-based company and you're starting to realize that your teams are not as responsive and that you're starting to wonder why is it that when you share a new idea of a project or a new transformation you want to do, why aren't they enthusiastic? Why is it that they're being quiet? They're not asking as many questions. If that's the case, I want to share with you one tip that you can apply today and see the difference it makes in that employee engagement with your teams. Hi, my name is Fahim Karim, and I'm an employee engagement expert, and I work with companies just like yours from having an unhealthy environment to keeping your talent even when employees are either, either working remotely or in a hybrid environment. And the way I do that is by creating a safe container where managers get to lead and listen, employees get to feel that they're part of the team and heard, and that it's, it's, it's done through by creating a safe container where they feel free to vocalize their opinion and ideas. And in the process, your company continues to grow and innovate. And you know, as someone with more than two decades of work experience working for one of the largest financial institutions in multiple million dollar projects with award winning in leadership and operations excellence, I love to take teams and turn them around so that everyone feels seen and heard. So the one tip I want to share with you in order to rejuvenate your team's camaraderie, right, to make them want to participate more is to think about it in a way that a happier team actually leads to a happier you. What do I mean by that? Well, the teams that you are working with, a lot of them are sometimes disengaged because they may not feel that they are important to us. As a leader, it is my job to make sure that my teams feel that I truly care about them. You know, there's a saying that, that goes, people don't care about what we have to say unless they realize we care for them. So the way I recommend doing that is to make sure that we're not bringing our negative emotions to work. What do I mean by that? I'll explain to you a little bit more. For example, let's say I've had a bad day at home and things haven't gone the way I wanted. I shouldn't be bringing that negative emotion from my home to my work. Let's say it went the other way around. Maybe my boss is upset with me and gave me a big yelling. I don't want to bring that negative emotion and now spread it across my team. So by you being that filter, keeping away those negative emotions from reaching your teams, you become the trustworthy leader that they will love to work with because they know that your negative emotions is not going to spew over to them and that you will continue to create that safe environment for them and be that uh, the, the supporting coach uh, that is going to help them develop to the next best level and that you're not going to put them down simply because you're having a bad day. So I encourage you to try that with your team and see the re response. You will be surprised when the team start to see that you're there sincerely wanting their best interests, you wanting them sincerely to develop, and you want to be that leader that actually protects them from unnecessary negative emotions coming over to the team that really they shouldn't be impacted by, you will start to see that their engagement level will increase so much that they will be participating more on the discussions, sharing their ideas, reaching out to you for your opinion, and you will start to see a big change in the whole uh, performance of the team. So if you like what you heard today, go ahead and click on the link below and connect with me on LinkedIn so that you don't miss out on any of the latest tips and strategies so that you can continue to be that leader that everybody loves to work with.